afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Liz Reese, Digital Marketing Specialist at Alertus Technologies. During this presentation, Brian Oakley, National Sales Director, and Pete Trombowski, Director of Product Development, will provide insight on Alertus VoIP and SIP phone notification, as well as how you can reach more people in your organization by leveraging your already existing phone notification system. Feel free to submit your questions during the webinar at any time, and they will be addressed during the Q&A session at the end of this presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you after today's session. If you have any questions after this pre presentation, please email marketing at alertus.com. Now I'd like to turn it over to Ryan and Pete. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really excited to be uh, here presenting. Uh, the voice phone notification piece uh, is near and dear to my, my heart because uh, before joining Alertus, I was in Unified Communication working with Cisco via voice notification systems. Uh, and phone system contact centers. So this is really an uh, exciting uh, addition to our product line, and you'll see we're, we're constantly enhancing and, uh, and adding capabilities to be able to use your VoIP notification and VoIP phone system, which you've made a significant investment in, for notification and uh, in reach areas, make sure that, that you've got full coverage of your notifications during an emergency. So with this presentation, we're going to go through, I'll do an introduction to Alertus and an Alertus background for those that are, uh, are fairly new to Alertus. Talk a little bit about the challenges. Uh, these challenges are universal. You know, if you're in a healthcare environment, a college, higher ed, K-12, to uh, corporate environment, it's all very similar across the board. We're all working to solve the same challenges. And we'll also touch on the Alertus solution, so you, you'll see the full capabilities of the Alertus system. And then from there, we'll really focus in on the VoIP notification Cisco, uh, we've got an announcement around Avaya, and also the, the SIP enunciator. And with that, we'll also demonstrate uh, a lot of the capabilities of the VoIP system with our, uh, our demonstration, live demonstration room here. So we've got a really uh, full webinar here for you, so we'll go ahead and get started. So Alertus Technology was established in 2002, and we're headquartered in the, the Baltimore, D.C. area. Uh, 2002 is key. Uh, that's way back before the industry even began, really. We, we were innovators in this space, and it came from an idea uh, and a uh, tragedy at the University of Maryland. There was a tornado that went through that killed two students that were in a portable classroom, and uh, there was no real good way to notify people very quickly and efficiently in, a, in an emergency. So our founders got together, one business, one more technical, and uh, came up with the Alert Beacon. That's one of the early generations of our products, and that has really grown, as you'll see from when we do a solution overview, uh, to really focus in and provide a full uh, high occupancy mass notification, uh, facility-based notification capability. We serve all sectors. As I mentioned, the challenges are similar between sectors, so uh, our products are, are uh, very applicable between all the different uh, sectors, like corporate, industrial, higher ed, healthcare, K-12, and we also are on uh, quite a few military bases as well. So let's start with uh, kind of the challenge as an emergency manager or, uh, or a um, manager for any kind of uh, events like this. You've got a lot of technology, both high-tech and low-tech things that you can activate, uh, be it a, a digital signage, the VoIP notification capability, maybe it's a mobile app, text messaging, and email. Uh, you've got lower tech things like your sound and paging systems and your fire alarm systems. Uh, but, you know, when you really think about it and, and look at it, how do you activate all those things? Maybe you have to go to uh, marketing communications for the digital signage. You've got to call telecom and have them activate the, the VoIP phone uh, or your data folks. Maybe you've got the ability to activate text messaging and email. But uh, when you look at it and try to test that in an active shooter environment, uh, you really can only activate one thing, and that's not full co fully coverage. So what Alertus really is able to help you do is unify all these technology, create, create connections to them, so that instead of a 30-minute activation trying to go to multiple technologies, we're taking it down to seconds. So uh, especially with the, uh, emergencies like an active shooter, tornado, something like that, you really need to get that message out in seconds and use every available notification endpoint as possible. Uh, and we're really focusing on this, this webinar on the VoIP notification piece because you've got phones, could be hundreds, could be thousands of phones out there that are just sitting on desks that are excellent notification endpoints. We can activate those within seconds along with all the other modes that we're going to talk about as well. So uh, we're able to consolidate that activation down, 
get get out to more people, more employees, uh, so you can save more lives, uh, make sure everyone's aware of a uh, pending or uh, active emergency. So I mentioned some of the the challenges, and there's also a few uh, drivers for the markets. Uh, with most of uh, the users are um, kind of have some kind of uh, play in with uh, NFPA. NFPA is really a uh, set of codes that dictate how uh, fire alarms should be installed, tested, and, and maintained within a building. Back in 2010, they added a uh, chapter that included mass notification. This, uh, this chapter is being phased in. Right now, it's uh, a uh, suggested component where uh, it outlines notification modes, how, how things should be activated and prioritized, and, and really provides guidelines. More and more municipalities and, and local uh, state uh, organizations are starting to require that as mass notification, that chapter, for high occupancy, occupancy uh, facilities. So maybe if you're building a brand new hospital, uh, NFPA codes a lot of times will dictate mass notification and, and what's needed within the buildings. Uh, when you get down into higher education, the Clery Act is very applicable. Uh, the, there's two things at stake with Clery Act. Uh, if not in compliance, one, there's uh, fines, and then two, there's also uh, putting uh, federal funding at risk. Speaking of federal, uh, the next one over there to the left, Unified Facilities Criteria, that's applicable to uh, federal facilities and also uh, military. So this uh, are a set of guidelines that whenever a, uh, the military state builds a new building, it needs to adhere to these uh, guidelines. A uh, code or a law that kind of uh, finds its way through all of these different things, and that's, that's uh, ADA accessibility. So providing the ability to notify all includes those with different abilities uh, and any kind of uh, handicaps. So that includes that providing audiovisual notifications so that uh, somebody can receive that message and then also uh, having it displayed in many different ways as possible. It even filters into uh, our alert beacon and the height that it gets installed at to ensure that those that are in uh, wheelchairs are able to also read the notification. So you'll find that that really permeates a lot of the codes because we our, our goal is to notify all. Um, next slide is the, the challenges. You know, outside of the codes, uh, most of our customers implement mass notification because it's important to protect employees, stakeholders, staff, contractors, anybody that's on site, visitors. Um, and there's also uh, you know challenges they face around you know no way to notify certain locations. Uh, uh, you know, if if you're in that boat. There's a lot of customers that are. We get told often that you know one one person has a bullhorn and they run down the hallway. We can really uh, apply technology to to improve that situation significantly. The building's not staffed 24/7. If you uh, have a security guard maybe there from eight till eight, uh, those other times, how do you get a message delivered to the the those sites? Um, special needs individuals again, ADA accessibility is key. Um, being that we can do uh, audio notifications and uh, and visual, you know, loud environments are covered very well. So uh, if you've got a uh, sound, sound system, say, on a manufacturing floor or if you're at a, in a loud area like a student union or a cafeteria or something like that, a uh, audio notification isn't going to be heard, so we provide visual notification capabilities as well. Uh, a lot of our, our uh, customers use uh, text messaging and email. We integrate with those technologies. Uh, but a lot of times there's places where cell phones aren't allowed, where you're not able to uh, take those either into where there's sensitive equipment, manufacturing floors, those kind of things. And lastly, uh, you know, difficulty reaching uh, visitors and contractors. It's hard to keep track of uh, employees or staff, let alone who's coming in to visit your facilities, contractors uh, that are doing work for a day, a week, something like that. So um, adding visual notification, audio notification to your building, to your facilities, allow you to uh, reach those uh, those individuals uh, just by the fact that they're at, in your buildings. So to uh, kind of bring it all together, Alertus provides a single point of activation. So that doesn't have to be just a uh, the web browser activation. It could be a mobile activation. It could be a panic button activation, which we'll demonstrate. It could even be an activation from your, uh, your uh, VoIP phone system where you can put a, a PIN code in and, and activate uh, a notification. So we allow you to activate everything from a single point. You choose which point based upon what's best in that emergency uh, and all, in, all options are available to you. We integrate all your notification assets, uh, digital signage, uh, television, um, you know, any of the alert beacons, uh, the alert beacons, 
uh, even the Cisco VoIP phones, uh, via VoIP phones, and, and uh, lineage VoIP notification systems as well. So we're able to bring that all together to activate at a single point. And then one, we fill in the gaps uh, with innovative alerting endpoints and, and products. So if you do need a physical uh, panic button, we can place that somewhere. If you need one that's connected to your PC, a uh, USB-based uh, panic button, we can do that. As well as uh, the alert beacon, which allows you to uh, put something, a uh, notification device where you have no capabilities whatsoever. So uh, really kind of three parts to bring the easy button to you to be able to activate everything in an emergency. Uh, quick overview, we're able to, uh, to activate audiovisual notification capabilities. Uh, we use your network to notify those, both wired and wireless, and we can take that information and distribute that out either through uh, sound systems, like uh, with text-to-speech, through indoor, outdoor uh, sound systems, through uh, digital signage, desktop notification, LED marquees for uh, visual uh, notification for loud areas, including the, the voice phone as well. And then also to uh, supplement our uh, partner's text messaging capabilities, we also have a uh, mobile app that's able to be uh, targeted notif to notify uh, individuals right directly on their smartphone supporting both Apple and Android. So as you can see, there's a lot of different technologies we bring together, and you'll see from the demo, we make it very easy to activate these things. You don't have to call four people, five people, uh, be dependent on individuals to be in certain locations, jobs, uh, staffing to be able to activate. We can do that all uh, from a single point uh, of your choosing. So. We'll go ahead and, uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and jump more into the, the VoIP notification and really focus in on that solution. So the uh, Alertus VoIP phone notification transforms office phones into a unified emergency notification system. So think about where you've got those office phones. They're sitting on desks. Uh, they're dedicated uh, devices that are always on. They're uh, in hallways. They're in conference rooms. They're, uh, they're in all parts of your facilities. And, uh, you spent a significant amount, might have been 500 bucks, maybe $1,000 uh, per phone to put those there. So let's leverage those as, in, as notification note endpoints. You know, we can activate all those phones simultaneously with an audiovisual notification and allow you to select using the VoIP phone speakers uh, if you uh, choose for, for your notification. So you can um, not only get a tone to go off, you could, ask, uh, you could have a uh, wave file to get attention. Uh, there's a lot of options which we'll go through there as well. Uh, it works right alongside our desktop notification. So the, these two work in concert, work very well. Um, when you're sitting at your desk, if you're getting two notifications of an intruder lockdown, you're going to be more likely to, to follow that. So it, it works extremely well next to, uh, next to a desktop at a workstation to ensure that somebody sitting there is not going to miss the message. Uh, it provides text and audio uh, real time, and uh, we can also do uh, pre-schedule alerts, so if there's uh, tests you want to pre-schedule or notifications you want to go just to VoIP phones, we can, uh, we can handle that and set that up ahead of time as well. So key features, uh, notification coverage, large area high occupancy facilities where, where the organizations have invested in these VoIP phone notification capabilities, uh, we're, we're an excellent easy add-on. Uh, emergency alerting, send an emergency notification to select phones associated uh, to a single cluster. So we're able to, to send that to a whole group of phones, and we'll talk a little bit more about targeting as well. Immediate activation, you'll see during the demo, uh, it's literally instantaneous. Uh, there's a very quick communication to uh, send that notification out and, and display that on the phone. Uh, with activity logging, we're able to uh, keep track of uh, statistics. And uh, Pete, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the statistics and some of the activity logging that we uh, can report on as well after incident. So uh, thanks, Ryan. So uh, on a phone-by-phone -phone basis, uh, we keep track of uh, at the time of the alert, uh, what message was sent to the phone, was the phone actually registered at the time uh, of the messaging, uh, if there was some issue uh, that may have occurred uh, during the delivery, uh, and uh, was the, if the message was, was uh, actually delivered to the phone. Uh, we keep all that in our, uh, in our database, and that's available for uh, evaluation at, after after test messages are run or and emergency alerts to make sure that uh, all the endpoints were activated. Excellent. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, um, reporting obviously is a huge piece, uh, not only ensuring that everything activates, but then also coming along uh, after action reports and be able to, to confirm what activated, who was notified, when, and with what message. So that, that uh, permeates our, our full system and what, what we uh, strive to report on 
based upon an, an activation. And then lastly, uh, it's very secure. Uh, developing these solutions, we used all of the uh, manufacturer approved uh, connections, connection capabilities, and uh, APIs. So uh, we're, we're doing something that's, that's certified by the, the end manufacturer, Cisco, Avaya, and other, other manufacturer VoIP systems we work with. So uh, that provides the, the security levels that's required so that uh, there isn't any advertent uh, activation or it doesn't uh, provide or, or give any other uh, security vulnerabilities. So it's a very secure system. Uh, so to talk a little bit more about the system, system and integration, uh, the Alertus server runs all the, the, the software to integrate with Cisco Call Manager and phones uh, and uh, communicates uh, directly with those. So there isn't adding this capability to your Alertus system doesn't mean you have to add additional servers and it, uh, a lot of uh, additional configuration. It's a very easy, quick add uh, with the way we've built that. Uh, delivery modes, we can uh, send text to a, a phone. We can uh, activate one of the tones. So uh, you can load a number of tones to, to the individual Cisco phones. We can activate those. Or if you prefer, we can send a, a wave file out to the, the phones and they will play those, uh, those wave files. So it could be a tone. We use the, uh, the uh, WENS uh, you know, emergency alert tone, that the, the similar tone you have uh, when your cell phone activates with a notification from state and local. Uh, but it could be uh, it could be the the CEO of the company with uh, you know saying there's an emergency. You could use whatever wave file you're looking for and have that go. Uh, and then also we can target notifications to specific phones. Uh, Pete, can you elaborate a little bit on uh, targeting capability? Sure, Ryan. So uh, within our Alertus console, it's uh, very easy for the administrator to set up uh, what what phones would reach uh, receive the messaging. Uh, we obviously have. Uh, from the very basic uh, directing to a particular extension or range of extensions, uh, and we can have a range of extension uh, with exclusions, so leaving certain phones out that uh, do not need to receive uh, the messaging. We've also got a way to extract information from the Cisco call manager, so by placing a particular description uh, fields in the, uh, the DN uh, uh, numbers in the call manager, uh, we're able to extract that and create groups from that using uh, by associating phones with the same uh, uh, tag name. Uh, we're also able to uh, extract uh, different device pool names that may have been used within a phone system and uh, make those available uh, to the administrator when creating uh, groups for targeting. Excellent. Thank you, Pete. So there's quite a few ways to really target and make sure your notification gets uh, delivered uh, to the, the right location uh, at the right time. So, uh, excellent. A couple other capabilities that are, are huge uh, with uh, our integration here is the ability to uh, call monitoring so that if uh, a certain call is made to either authorized or unauthorized numbers, uh, you can also uh, be notified. So, um, the uh, most popular use for this, which I'll do in our demonstration, is we can set off a notification when somebody dials 911 that notification can include uh, information about that phone, the extension, where it's located, uh, those kind of things, so that uh, you can also uh, start to respond immediately and not have to, to, to wait to um, you know, either get a call from somebody within your organization or to have uh, you know, first responders showing up and not being prepared or not knowing what's going on within your facility. So that's a huge feature to, to be able to uh, increase your uh, ability to respond to, uh, say, a, a 911 uh, emergency like that. Uh, you can also activate from your Cisco phone or, uh, or soon to be a VIA. Uh, you can go up to that phone, you get a PIN code, you enter, and that activates a specific alert. And then you also put in a, uh, a passcode so that somebody that gets that needs to have a, a double level of authentication to be able to activate that so it's not an inadvertent uh, type thing. And we'll demonstrate that a little bit as well. And then as, as Pete uh, discussed earlier, we uh, keep logs of uh, who activated that, which phones were activated, and really can, uh, can provide all those act after action reporting. So Pete had mentioned quick, easy way to uh, configure this. Once uh, you work with your IT group to connect up the Alerta server uh, and software to the Cisco call manager, as an emergency manager or system administrator here, You've got really good ability to uh, build those target, those target groups. You can even see the uh, exclusions. You can pick which tones you're activating, uh, attach the wave files. 
So really, we provide the power to the, the administrator and make it very easy as a point and click to, to build, configure your groups, and, and set that all up within the Alerta system. So you don't have to be a, a telecom data uh, engineer whiz to be able to uh, program this and build out your notification. Also, uh, you know, with the Cisco phone integration, we get the question, which phones do we support? You'll see um, pretty much the, the Cisco phones probably from the last, what, eight, ten years uh, are supported. And uh, even in that list, you'll find some of the, uh, the conference phones. So we can display a message and also have a tone go off for, say, the, the, the conference uh, phones that are in your uh, meeting rooms and those kind of things. So that's a lot of times a great way to get in and, and get a notification in those rooms that you know, may or may not have people on PCs or may not have uh, you know, a uh, sound system in there for an announcement, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> also an excellent application uh, for the Cisco phone notification capability. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, share the, the demo room that I'm in here. That, that webcam should pop up, and you'll, you'll see the uh, notification capabilities we've got here in the room. Uh, the Cisco phone there is where we'll, we'll focus most of my activation capabilities. But we've got panic buttons, uh, digital signage, LED marquees, alert beacons, you know, all the capabilities, as well as whenever uh, you see a notification, the PC I'm actually working on to do this uh, demonstration will also uh, will also pop up and uh, and you'll see a, a desktop notification as well so I'm just going to jump out of the uh, presentation real quick and uh, and log into our uh, into our user interface just so you can see the uh, the messages going active uh, how we manage those how we can cancel those out on the user interface and uh, as we go so what I'm actually going to start with is uh, panic bat button activation, and you'll see the, the Cisco phone will be activated as well as part of this. The tone you'll hear will be uh, from the Cisco phone, and uh, this is a lockdown. So, you know, somebody enters your facility, you know, you've got a threat, you can hit a button, lockdown, and this instantly activates your desktop, your, uh, your, your digital signage, your LED marquees, everything, um, pushes out a mobile activation. So that tone you hear there is the uh, the Cisco phone notification. Proceed to a secure location on the interior of the building, away from doors and windows. Await further instructions. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out, and the devices will check back in and uh, and start to cancel out, and uh, the the message will uh, end. So now let's say you're uh, you're responding to this. You get to the front desk. Uh, you've uh, taken care of the situation. The cops have arrived and uh, taken the person away. Well, it's important not only to notify people of an, of an event like that, but also to send the all clear because there's probably people in their offices, under their desks, barricading doors, all that. You want to make sure that you get that same message back out to them. Well, let's say you're at the front desk right now and, you know, you're, you don't have a PC that you can log into, you're, you didn't bring your mobile app, uh, your mobile phone. You want to actually activate an all clear from the Cisco phone. So we've got it set up so that if you dial 9, nine, five pound, uh, this will actually prompt you with a uh, prompt that will say, you're about to activate the all clear Welcome notification. To system. You have called to activate all clear. So it confirmed for me that it's the all clear that I, I, I was uh, dialing. I've got an authorization pin for hit pound. And what that will do, it will confirm that on the phone. And now you can see the, the, the activation going live and we've just activated the all clear directly from your Cisco voice notification system. So we've got everybody uh, notified that the uh, emergency is over and back to uh, business as normal to cancel all that out. Uh, the, other, the other demo that I mentioned is uh, the ability to monitor extensions. You can monitor any extensions, any numbers dialed on the phone and then link that with the notification. That notification can go to select individuals, it could go to a voice, another VoIP phone, it could go to desktop pop-ups, those kind of things. I've got this one set up to actually do a desktop pop-up. So let's uh, go ahead, I'm going to dial 911 and this doesn't have any outgoing trunks or isn't connected, so, uh, so we're not actually going to uh, get anybody. But you'll notice that as soon as we dial that, we've got a desktop pop-up that's coming up that, uh, that notifies of the extension you know, some, some location information, what they've dialed it, dialed so you know exactly uh, how to respond. Uh, I didn't have 
all of our devices go off, but I did have, uh, say we could say these uh, TVs and digital signage uh, screens in the upper right and left corners there. Maybe, maybe that's in your operation center. So we're also popping that up on uh, larger screens within the operation center so that, it, that that message can't be missed and uh, you can begin responding immediately to uh, a situation like that. Uh, and I mentioned it could really be any extension. So uh, if HR wanted to know every time they were calling your competitor, uh, we could uh, have a pop-up show up in HR when somebody calls the competitor. So uh, it, it really can be any extension. Or if you've got a specific uh, organization, you know, emergency number, we can also uh, monitor that. We can monitor multiple numbers, so you can set up uh, as many as you'd like as well. So go ahead and, uh, and cancel that out. Uh, and that, then we'll go back to uh, standard notification. So with that, it kind of concludes a little bit of the, the, the uh, demo on the Cisco notification piece. Uh, I'll jump back into the presentation. As, uh, as I indicated earlier, we're uh, also uh, now going to be releasing an integration with both Avaya Aura and IP Office. So the, uh, the ability to activate yet another high profile large manufacturer uh, phone system uh, is coming this summer. So Pete, uh, summer release is usually June, July, August. When uh, I think we are uh, looking at uh, first, second week of August. August, all right, excellent. So uh, if you've got uh, Viora, uh, let's start uh, talking about integrating with that as well. Also, uh, our customers will uh, that, that are international will also use the Cisco VoIP notification capability to, uh, to send out uh, multilingual notifications. So we've got the ability to do this on the desktop as well as on the, uh, the Cisco phone. So we'll uh, link real quick to, to a, a quick video demonstration of the international. So you'll see uh, uh, the Cisco notification uh, supports the ability to do uh, to display both uh, you know multinational, multilingual as well. All right, and then uh, for those that are on the call that say, "Hey, I've, I've got some old lineage phone systems uh, that that are, are either not VoIP or have uh, have VoIP capabilities, but not all of the the handsets are uh, VoIP handsets." We can also integrate with those systems. There's a list there at the bottom of uh, a lot of those popular systems which we've uh, integrated with as well. But what this uh, SIP enunciator capability does is it takes advantage of your paging groups to be able to go ahead and, uh, and page to uh, a number of phones uh, with an audio text-to-speech notification. So we actually convert the text that is part of your emergency notification to speech and then put that over the, uh, the audio uh, groups. Uh, Pete, do you want to uh, add a little bit or talk a little bit about some of the, the, the integration capability? So we've got a, we've got a number of uh, phone systems, uh, as you can see listed there, that we're able to uh, connect with. As uh, as Ryan mentioned, uh, we rely on the paging capabilities of that uh, phone system to deliver the the messages uh, simultaneously to the to the phone endpoints, and uh, we we deliver a message uh, created by our our text-to-speech, uh, uh, text-to-speech product, uh, so you get a very high-quality uh, message delivery. All right, excellent. Uh, so yeah, so even uh, you know a phone system from 10 years ago that uh, that, it, that isn't as uh, high-tech, we're able to leverage that and uh, deliver a, uh, a message uh, that's spoken over that that phone paging system. So thank you, Pete. Go and uh, do a quick demo of the uh, SIP enunciator with a, uh, we happen to use a Cisco phone here, but we're, we're actually connecting just to the paging functionality. So we're uh, activating a message here. We've uh, selected an announcement that includes uh, the uh, SIP enunciator capability. System test of the 
vasculitis emergency alert system. No action needed in a real emergency. Important alert information will be displayed here. So that gives you a quick idea. We're able to do a uh, customized text-to-speech notification on the fly there. Uh, and this concludes the, the demonstration uh, part of our uh, presentation here. So uh, I'll turn it back over so we can uh, start uh, going through uh, some questions and answers. Uh, go ahead and uh, start posting questions if, if you haven't already uh, done that. Great. All right. Well, thanks, guys. We, as Brian said, we are beginning our Q&A session of our presentation. Uh, if you have a question, please submit them through the chat or question box. Uh, please note, we, if we do not get your question today, uh, during this session, a representative will reach out to you to answer your question directly. A recording of this webinar will also be shared with you after today's presentation. So let's begin with our first question. What happens when the system is activated and individuals are on a call, um, whether directly with one other individual or during, or such as a conference call? Uh, what exactly happens in that scenario? Uh, that, that's a very good question. So uh, with our integrated solution, if there's an ongoing call in progress, uh, the uh, text will be obviously still delivered to the screen of the phone. And the, uh, if the user is uh, using the handset uh, to, uh, in the, in the, as part of their call, then they'll get what's known as a whisper page in their earpiece. Uh, so they'll, they'll still hear the audio portion of the uh, alert message. But it's delivered to that person in a way that the, the other uh, person involved on the other end of the call, they will not be able to hear the, the message. Excellent. Great. All right. Thanks, Pete. Our next question asked, and, and we've received a lot of questions in, in, in regards to this, but are there any phones that the Alertus phone notification system does not support? Um, is there, or is it pretty much all of them, or is there anything specific that it, that do not support in terms of uh, phone? Um, on, on kind of a high level, uh, that's a good question. On kind of a high level, uh, you know, the Cisco notification capability, uh, we integrate with that as Cisco as a manufacturer, Avi as a manufacturer is releasing this summer. And then the third would be, uh, you know, the SIP enunciator really has uh, universal capabilities. Uh, Pete, do you want to elaborate on, you know, any, any kind of uh, any other uh, issues with uh, notification uh, and integration? Sure. Uh, so, Ryan, yeah. So, the, uh, the SIP enunciator is uh, a little more phone model agnostic. It's more us. Uh, there's, uh, as we had listed there, there's the, it's a particular call manager that is uh, uh, what's important for connecting that product up. Uh, and on the, the Cisco and, uh, and Avaya side, there, there are some uh, legacy phones from those manufacturers that uh, uh, may not be supported, and uh, that certainly, if this is, uh, if you have a, a phone model that's not on the list that we presented today, share it with us, and uh, we'll take a look at it. And we'll review it for compatibility. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, sometimes that's just a matter of uh, the uh, technology that maybe Cisco or Via put into the phone eight or ten years ago uh, isn't doesn't meet their standards today. So, mm -hmm. uh, in their their connectivity ability. So, so uh, yeah, if if you don't see the uh, a phone uh, on there, check with us, uh, and uh, we'll find a way to get a notification to it. Mm -hmm. Might be a matter of implementing our SIP enunciator for those specific group of phones. Right, right, and and that, that list is uh, that that represents a list of all the phones we've checked to meet you know to meet the, the needs of all of our our customers to date. Great, mm -hmm. excellent. Great, all right, thanks, guys. Our next question is sort of twofold. Um, you know, the first part is, you know, can the Alertus phone notification system be configured to where only notify specific floors and or and or departments? And um, if that's the case, um, when it all when it hits all clear, um, does it, you know? Basically, how you know it, how is it uh, activated and completed, or in terms of uh, configuration settings? Can it go to just on only on the ninth floor if it's activated? Can it go? Uh, can it go to only certain departments? How specific can the you know can that configuration go? Oh, that's a that's a very good question. So as uh, as uh, we we showed in the presentation, we have. Uh, 
uh, granularity for targeting the messages to the phones, either on a phone-by-phone -phone basis or on groups of phones. Uh, and really just to recap based on uh, the extension or extension ranges. Uh, we've also got the use of description tags that can be extracted from the call system. So uh, specific uh, tags can be entered into the phone system uh, on, a, uh, on a DM by DM basis and uh, Alertus can, can extract those tags and create uh, targeting groups uh, from the console. So uh, we have, targeting is a very important part of our solution and uh, we have a number of different, uh, of, of different methods to uh, determine which phones will receive the messages. Absolutely. So yeah, it, it can be targeted by floor, um, by uh, say if you wanted to target just to HR employees, something like that, there are, there are ways to, uh, to target that notification. Great. Great. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Our next question asks, is there a way to uh, receive a text message uh, converted to a, a, a WAV file when it is activated, the phone notification system, is there any way that it can go into mobile devices by any chance? We do have uh, the ability to uh, send a mobile app alert to uh, all those that have the mobile app in installed. So uh, that'll actually, that the text that's being uh, displayed on the phone announced uh, will also uh, be pushed to uh, mobile recipients uh, with smartphones, Apple and Android uh, are the, the two main ones we support there. Um, with the SIP enunciator, that will uh, pick up any any custom text you put in and uh, and announce that uh, through the, the phone uh, as well. Great. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Our next question asks, can you connect uh, the phone notification system to uh, radio um, with radio devices by any chance? Yeah, absolutely. We've done that uh, quite a few instances with uh, land mobile radio where we leverage our text-to-speech capability, uh, very similar to the SIP enunciator. And what we can do is break into the channel, make the announcement. You can set how many times it, it makes the announcement, say say twice is, is generally um, what's used so that if somebody misses the first part of the message, they get it the second time around. And then we'll, we'll uh, drop that connection so that the uh, radio can be used for responding to that event. So, so absolutely, uh, we use a slightly different technology, and it varies based upon which uh, manufacturer you have there. Uh, but we we can absolutely look at uh, integrating that as well. Great. All right. Thanks, Ryan. And I'm guessing our next question asks: Does that also apply to? And it's a little bit more specific, like emergency phones too. Does that work to the same capacity, or a little bit different, or? Um, if those emergency phones can be a part of a, a paging group where you can uh, page those, they'll automatically go off hook. Uh, we can uh, do a uh, SIP enunciator uh, to those, those devices. So uh, it really depends on the, the capabilities of the, the end, end device and whether it can go off hook by itself, whether it uh, can be part of paging group, those kind of things. But uh, we can definitely get into those details uh, you know, when, when we're exploring uh, the applications. Okay, great. All right, thanks, Ryan. Our next question asks, what are the op options for initiation on the phone notification system? Is it just through, um, you know, is it just, I guess the question is asking how flexible is it? Does it, is it only just through, you know, through a press of a button on the phone to initiate? Is it through the, the, the server? What exactly, what exactly are the options there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you can really initiate any of these uh, notifications manually or even automatically if you connect it up to like weather feeds or those kind of things. It um, can be initiated by a mobile app, web browser, on the phone. You can put a pin code in for specific preset alerts uh, with a passcode. Um, it can be initiated by dialing a certain number, uh, just like we showed uh, with 911. So there's a lot of different ways to initiate it. Um, you know, uh, the the phone notification capability then just becomes part of the uh, the alert and the devices we notify once it's actually initiated. Pete, any other uh, any other capabilities for activation that you can think of related to the Cisco phone or? Uh, yeah, I, I think Ron, you, you hit them all. I mean, we talked about uh, panic buttons and you know, oh, yeah. panic yeah. buttons, like you showed on the on the uh, in the demonstration. Uh, we've got the integrations with other services that you mentioned, and we've got. Uh, uh, and we've got, you know, from the console and uh, from software panic buttons we offer on the desktops. Excellent, yes. 
Great, great, thanks guys. Our next question is a little related. Does the Alertus system need to be um, need to be opened on your, you know, on a browser or, you know, in, or in, to, in, or does something need to be connected in in correlation to when they actually make, you know, when they actually do make a message or or, or can it be just a pre-recorded message and have it all set up so then when you do activate it all, you know, it automatically goes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can build all your uh, messages. You can create presets, and then activate them any number of ways uh, to uh, to get that message out. Uh, you don't have to be logged into the web browser. You could use your mobile phone. You could set it up with a uh, a panic button either on the wall or a software-based panic button. Actually, uh, this PC you can actually uh, give certain logged-in users the ability to actually activate from uh, these uh, pre plan notifications right from their desktop from uh, the, the drop-down menu. So I just, uh, on the screen here, I've got a few available. You can also set them up as an icon. So uh, you can uh, set them up so you double-click on that. It requires you to validate that you actually want to activate that, and then it can notify and, and activate your message from there. So tons of different ways to activate. You don't just have to be logged into a, a PC or uh, a web browser to, uh, to activate that message and do it very quickly. Our next question asks, can this feature also be applied to external applications or, um, or infrastructure such as a fire, a fire alarm interface? Can you talk a little bit more in detail on that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we've actually got that integrated here in the room. You saw the, the uh, Honeywell panel on the left there. If, uh, we've got it set up so that you can do one of a couple different integrations. One, it could be just a simple contact closure from the panel so that when it goes into alarms, you know, uh, we, we trigger a preset notification that's set up for that building to say that there is, uh, you know, the fire alarm's going off, to exit the building immediately, something like that. That can be delivered to a Cisco phone just as easily to a desktop, an alert beacon, and all of our notification modes. Uh, so that's kind of first level integration. Second level is we've actually got the ability to monitor all the events coming out of the fire panel and create specific alerts based upon that. So if somebody pulls a pull station, we can send out a different alert that says a pull station's been pulled. We can say where that pull station's located. Uh, or if, say, if the smoke detector head, we could actually say smoke has been detected in the building, you know, uh, exit immediately. You could even say where that's coming from. So we've got a lot of information coming from the fire panel that we can then push to any of our notification endpoints, including the Cisco VoIP phones. Great, great. Right. Thanks, Ryan. Our last question asks, when, uh, is there a limit to how many phones you can activate the alert to? Um, do you have a, you know, is there a certain capacity to how many phones you can send a message? Is that, you know, is that per the pricing that's involved? Can you talk a little bit more in detail? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Actually, uh, I'd like to refer that to Pete because he's done a lot of that, the load testing and uh, we've actually got a number of customers with tens of thousands of phones. So with the, the Cisco integration, at this time we have a limit of uh, up to 10,000 phones uh, of, of messaging. And this is something that we're working on uh, to resolve in the future. Uh, hopefully a little bit later this year we'll be able to resolve with another version uh, to that product that uh, will expand beyond the 10,000 users and, uh, and to, to support multiple uh, instances of the Cisco call managers uh, simultaneously. So it's just an ongoing expansion of our uh, solution and uh, uh, that, we, that we have planned for this year. Uh, on the SIP enunciator, that's, that's a little bit different solution. It uh, relies on the paging capabilities of the phone system. So the, the limitations are really set by the manufacturer of that system. You know, some, some might support 50 phones uh, in a page group. Some might support 200. And so uh, the SIP enunciator can actually be scaled to accommodate uh, the, the maximum number of phones you want to target simultaneously. Well, that concludes our Q&A session of our presentation. Uh, again, if we did not get to your question, uh, we did uh, get quite a few questions about phone types um, and, you know, in uh, manufacturers. So if you 
you will be uh, receiving uh, you know further insight from you know directly from a representative um, in regards to your question asked. Um, and if you have any additional questions or need additional information after this webinar um, or something comes up, uh, please feel free to email marketing at alertus.com and we will be happy to assist. If you uh, are interested in learning more information about Alertus and what other solutions we do offer, uh, you can visit our website at alertus.com. And if you would like to see the full schedule of our upcoming webinars, uh, you can visit alertus.com forward slash webinars to see the full schedule. So thank you very much for joining today's webinar, and we look forward to meeting you again soon.